Hello everybody, it's about 10 o'clock at night at the moment, so I've got the light on on the mobile phone camera here, so that's probably why I'm not looking directly at the screen. But uh, yeah, we are indeed having a heat wave here in the UK. It's been up to around 30 odd degrees, 32 degrees, which is about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's been warm for a sustained period. It seems to have been this way for you know a good two months or so. And our last frost around here was in April. And in the UK, it's quite common to get uh, frosts up until, you know, even mid to the end of May. But, uh, yeah, so we haven't had one of those since April. So, yeah, and it's led me to start thinking a little bit about climate change and is it upon us? Because if you think about the, the winter that we had, it certainly was, by UK standards, a hard winter. And what one could describe as a proper winter, like what they get on the continent, something like that. You know, cold winter... You know, then you get your spring, then you get a hot summer, then autumn, winter goes around again. And it starts to make me think, are we going that way? But um, on the other hand, it's not always good. And you're, Okay, it seems good when you're down the beach or at the swimming pool. Yeah, great. But uh, on the other hand, I also read the other day that um, certain farmers have had problems with crops such as lettuce, which apparently stopped growing over a certain temperature and uh, things like that and of course the lack of rain as well i mean we had a few spots earlier but nothing you know nothing like we need and you know, the lack of rain of course that uh, that explains for itself with regards to the problems that that can cause plants and having to maybe install the irrigation systems the costs and the you know the costs to to the economy to farmers etc to workers or whatever if crops are lost and that's certainly something that we need to factor in I mean, I'll just show you something. Yeah, so this is some um, spinach. If you've been following me for a while, you know that uh, I'm growing quite a bit of this. But uh, look, it's gone, it's, it's bolted, it's gone to seed. Be all bitter if you eat these leaves now down here. But these ones are fine, and the other ones in the other bed are fine. But the point is, imagine if you lost a whole field of spinach like that. Now it sounds laughable but it's really not. It could push the price of um, of the crop up which consumers may or not be willing to pay and also so it's a, just a problem for the farmer, for the workers there, you know the economy as a whole and it is indeed potentially very real. So are things changing in the sense of the way that um, we grow things and in the sense of other things that we can grow? Maybe it's required or going to get that way that we embrace growing other things. I mean, for example, if you take a look down here at this autumn royal grapevine, granted it is in a polytunnel, but look at, get out of it, look at the growth that this has put on this year. I mean, the UK has a great climate for growing many varieties of grapes anyway. Not that uh, many people realise that, but uh, you really can grow some great, uh, great grapes here. But uh, look at that. I mean, look at that, man. That's literally from there, look. This is Autumn Royal. It's a Californian variety. Of course, long, warm summers are very, very common there. Get off. Oh. Come here, you. Get off. That's going out there. Anyway, back to where we were. So, yeah, looking at that, look. Think of the growth there, look. And that's this one as well. So, expecting some good crops off of that, hopefully, next year. And, um, obviously, the peaches, we spoke a lot about them, so I won't go too much into that. But they, they were a great crop, of course. You know, often seen as a Mediterranean crop. Cropped very well here. And here, look. This, I mean, yeah, okay, not going to be grow mangoes generally here in the UK because of course the winter's coming and uh, but um, look at that man look at the growth off of that mango tree so intriguingly I remember a while ago a year or so ago I spoke to a friend of mine who's from Hungary and historically or normally in countries like that when he was telling me that um, they get you know very cold winter then you get your spring and you get a very hot summer where which it can reach like to around 40, 40 odd degrees C. Then you get your autumn, then your winter and it spins around again. But he was telling me that um, over there, they had a sea, they, a few years ago, the climate there, it wasn't typical and it, it was changing. And it, lead, it starts to make me think now, is climate change upon us? And have we got to find ways to slow it down? Have we got to find ways to 
grow different things because end of the day food security is important it's probably you know next to water supply it's the well obviously water food and air without those things we haven't got anything have we so are we gonna have to start thinking a bit more and okay yeah at the moment it's dry no rain and yeah you go to your tap can't you and get your water out but do we need to start thinking of ways of storing a lot more of our own water for the garden in the sense of water butts or whatever you know having you know on farms certain farmers I know have got reservoirs on their land and things like that but certainly has hit home this year because I mean yeah you know brilliant long summer but it's not all good in every way and there are other things that we need to start thinking about in the sense of as I mentioned earlier, these lettuces, well if this is going to happen every year, do we have to grow different varieties or whatever, sourced, you know, seeds from countries, varieties, etc, with warmer climates, so that we don't have a massive problem with, you know, lettuce shortages, I mean it sounds like a joke, but it's not, I mean imagine if, you know, there was a, a shortage of, you know, anything really, but something like really a staple of the British diet, so to speak, like potatoes. Imagine it if, you know, potatoes didn't make, you know, the size and the amount that we would come to expect. So you could be looking at uh, real problems there, the costs going up, and uh, many people are struggling to make ends meet these days anyway. And you could be looking at more expensive food and all the problems associated with that. So are there other things we might have to start looking into, like varieties of sweet potatoes? Um, I don't know. I think the world is changing and the more we, you know, the more we go on adaptation and progression and of course taking steps to to stop this. It's very very important indeed because there's a lot at stake here and there's a lot of things that need to need to be considered for instance could we you know with regards to the growing of apples may we need to start growing apples that uh, thrive in warmer climates things like dare I say it, Granny Smith you know where is this going where is this going to lead and basically what can we do about it to ensure our own our own food security really okay bit of food for thought there hope you're all doing well out there we'll speak soon next time